Kravit. Today I'm going to share with you some ways that you can make your own high quality painting panels for creating your own works of art. Unfortunately, if you paint a lot and want high quality archival material, these panels can be very expensive when purchased from a manufacturer. The good news is that you can make your own for a fraction of the price. The bad news for a lot of people is that making panels can be a messy and time consuming process. For a long time, I did as many others have by brushing layers of glue onto the support, whether it be MDF panel or wood, and then applied canvas or linen, and then rolled it flat, hoping that tons of glue wouldn't be spilled off onto the dining room table. Then I would have to find something heavy, weights or cans of paint, to put on top of books to keep the linen or canvas smashed down into the glue onto the panel, and then waited overnight as they dried, hoping that there were no problems with it. I dreaded doing it, but there is a solution, and that's what we're going to talk about today. To pay for canvas, paint, and brushes, I work as an airline pilot, which means that I travel more than just about anybody. Panels are a way of life for me, but they can be for you as well. Whether you're painting in the studio or on plein air, these panels make a fantastic support for your work for a number of reasons. As some of us have found out, stretch panels can easily be ruined if a sharp object pokes a hole through them. If you travel with your canvases, they will certainly be subjected to higher likelihood of such mishaps. Like me, you may have a limited amount of material that you can carry with you. You can carry five or more panels in the same amount of space that you could carry one stretch canvas. Making your own panels provides you with a hard surface that can be archival and convenient. I personally use panels for virtually any painting smaller than 16 by 20 inches now. There are a variety of options available to you as a support for your canvas or linen that you will use. While some people simply brush a layer of gesso on top of a piece of wood or MDF board, and that works fine for them, my personal preference is to paint on linen or canvas. This is what we're going to focus on today. These panels will make a great support whether you're working in pastels, acrylic, or linen. There are many choices when it comes to the type of material you'd like to put your panels onto. These are some of the more popular. This is a very thin piece of plywood known as Baltic birch. You can purchase this from a hobby store or online. This piece happens to be one eighth of an inch thick. The problem with this type of wood is that it is vulnerable to a significant amount of warping. To keep that from happening, you can sand and varnish both sides before applying a painting support. While it is, I think, lightweight, due to the warping and the work involved, it is my least favorite panel to work with. This next panel is made out of a high quality veneer laminated plywood, which was left over from one of the tabarets that I built. This piece is one quarter inch thick, and again, while making a nice support, it can be vulnerable to warping, especially if you make larger panels. Additionally, the one quarter inch is a little thicker than I prefer to work with because I want to fit as many panels into my panel travel carrier as I possibly can. Next is MDF board, which is inexpensive and available in a number of thicknesses from virtually any lumber yard or major retailers such as Home Depot or Lowe's. This panel is very rigid and generally not as likely to warp as plywood. The reason I don't really care for it is that it is a bit heavier than my favorite materials and you really need the one quarter inch at least thick variety to keep it from warping. The last two options we'll talk about are my personal favorites. This is called gator board. It is essentially a foam core with a very strong hard cardboard type material bonded to either side. This is some lightweight stuff and very durable. It will not warp or bend. It is however one quarter inch thick and again I prefer something thinner. This stuff, at least for me, is great to paint on, at least in the studio or locally if traveling with a number of panels isn't an issue. Finally, and this is my number one all-time preferred material, it's called dye bond, and it's generally used in the sign making business. It has two very thin layers of, sometimes painted, sometimes not, aluminum bonded to a polyethylene core. This is three mils thick, which is just about one eighth of an inch. It is lightweight, the strongest of any of the boards, and will not deteriorate over time. It's truly archival. This is the ticket, in my opinion. Let's take a look at how we can make panels out of these materials. Okay, we are now inside of the dining room, using the dining room table, which I'm sure that my wife will be thrilled about. 
But the point is, is that making panels this way is extremely clean, there's no mess, and there's a very minimal amount of materials that you need. To start off, you're going to need your, your support, which is essentially going to be the material you're using, whether it's a piece of wood, piece of gator board, piece of dye bond material, or MDF. You're also going to need a way to adhere your linen, which is what this is, or your canvas, which is what this is, to your board. And that's where this special film called Biva 371B as in Bravo comes in. Um, I'll give you the information for uh, the price per square inch and basically what it's going to cost you to make these panels. This is 2.5 mils. The film will come in a large roll like this and you simply cut the size of the piece that you need. The film has got three pieces to it. On the back there is a piece of paper. In the middle, sandwiched in between the paper and a piece of mylar, is the glue. Let's talk about how you get the glue to adhere to the panel and the canvas or linen first. I use a commercial seal 210 machine that I purchased on eBay. You can purchase these for a couple hundred dollars up to as much as you want to spend. A brand new one of these costs close to eighteen hundred dollars. So to start off and show you how very simple this is, you take the piece of Biva film and you peel off the back paper portion which sometimes is the hardest part to separate. The part where the um, glue is has sort of a matte, not sticky, but sort of very slight tacky feel to it. The mylar part does not. And you just put the Biva film down on top of your painting support. Make sure you cover it up like that. We heat our iron to 150 degrees, or our seal machine in this case, and we put the panel in with the glue side up facing the heat source and just tack it down, hold it down for maybe 30 seconds or so and then we can take that out, let it cool off a minute. While we're doing that, I'm going to pick up this piece of dye bond material and what you need to know about it is that it comes with a cover on it to protect it because people use this for making signs. So you want to peel off the clear plastic protective material on there. This is going to make a 5 by 7 inch panel. And here's your painting panel. Boy, I love these things. You take your piece of Biva material that you've cut to the appropriate size. And in this case, I noticed that the glue actually stuck to the paper. So I'm going to put the paper down on top of the panel. And we'll put this in the machine. Heat it up. Just tack the glue down onto the, onto the panel there. Wait a few seconds. We can lift that up and let that cool off for a minute. And then the final piece we're going to do on this piece of MDF board. So once again, we peel off the paper and I can feel that on this piece the glue is adhering to the mylar once again. I cannot explain why the glue sometimes sticks to the paper and why it sometimes sticks to the mylar. And we'll just put that in there. Make sure that it's lined up properly. And close it. Okay, let's go back to our piece of gator foam now. And we should be able to peel this off and the glue I don't know if you can see that in the video, but the glue is sticking onto the gator board. There it is. Okay. So now we can take our piece of canvas and place it right down onto the panel like that. And we'll put it back into the press. And at 150 degrees, we can leave it probably for four minutes four minutes or five minutes, maybe not even that long, and we're good to go.
So while that one is heating up in the machine, we'll take our piece of dye bond material and pull the paper off and see if our glue is adhering to it. In this case, it's not. Okay, I didn't heat it long enough. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in here with this. And we want to make sure that the glue sticks to the dye bond. In fact, that's probably long enough for, for our piece of canvas on our piece of gator board. So we're going to let this piece cool. Let's take our piece of MDF and we'll see if I heated that one long enough. The glue is about to come off. Maybe from this angle. Oh, there it is. Sometimes you got to help it. And you can see the glue is on there. And now we'll put the piece of canvas right on top of that and open up the machine and should be able to take out our piece of dye bond. And when that cools off, we will go ahead and pull the uh, paper off exposing the glue. In the meantime, let's adhere our piece of canvas to our piece of MDF board. So here's our piece of dye bond board and we pull off the paper and the glue is sticking nicely to the board. This is a piece of double primed linen. We'll put that right on. So now there. I think we can take the MDF board out of our iron. It's nice and hot. And there's no bubbles. It's nice and flat. Let's put the last piece in, which is our piece of dye bond. I think it's time to take this out now. And they can be a little hot, so you want to be a little bit careful. And we'll put that down there to cool. Now we can close up our machine, turn it off, and we'll get the X-Acto blade. So we'll start out with the piece of, piece of uh, dye bond. And very simple to cut. All you do is run along the edge and cut off the excess. Do it to all four sides. If there's any excess glue, it'll cut that off as well. And you end up with a archival, lightweight, very thin canvas or linen panel that you would spend a lot more money for buying commercially. And it's exactly the same quality. So we can do the same thing with our gator board. Here we have a gator board, lightweight, quarter inch thick panel to complement our, in canvas, to complement our linen panel on dye We have an MDF panel with canvas on it, professional, clean, minimal mess, and at a fraction of the cost of what you would buy these for. And you can use canvas or linen. I just demonstrated with both just to show you they can be done. And that's it.